right. So excited to be here in Mumbai. Uh, I was here three years ago and came back here. A wonderful setting here in Aegis. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting here. So a question to you guys. Um, on May 12th, something happened. And a ransomware attack happened. What was the name of that? Everybody knows it. WannaCry, exactly. So I think the WannaCry, what WannaCry really did was it actually made awareness about the security. So WannaCry attacked 100 nations at the same time within a span of few hours. And think about this more than 75,000 people. You know, those were whether, you know, in the police stations, in hospitals, in schools, all over, their hosts got infected and they got a ransom note saying that, hey, you have to give more than $600 in Bitcoin. Think about that situation happening to you, happening to me, happening to everybody. And those days are not far away. So, this has been told in the past as well, and this, I would like to give a quote by ex-FBI director here that, uh, you know, there are only two types of companies, those who have been hacked or they will be. So why all this thing is happening? And the reason for that is, you know, so far the organizations have been focused on just the perimeter-based controls. We think the security is more like, you know, you build a fort and then, you know, the higher the walls and you can secure it, but it's not that anymore, right? Because the, the boundaries are porous. Your users are, you know, using all the social network and IoT devices and everything, right? So with that, attackers can get into any organization in few spans, in few minutes. And the way they do that is social engineering and the phishing attacks. So NF talk about attackers and you know, their strategies, but what can we do as a defense? So in order to do that defense discussion, let me get to the roots. So let's talk about what are the data sources, talk about the use cases and the data processing pipeline. So, so when we talk about data sources as such, the first thing you talk about is, you know, just took a mental picture of the enterprise network. A start topology, hundreds of thousands of hosts connected via the network. There are hundreds of network elements all those hubs, switches, routers, and you also have the security products over there, like intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, firewalls, all those are emitting the data, and you are recording that data, and in terms of network logs, network flows, and uh, DNS data, what can you do with that? No, this is nothing new. I mean, it has been there from 90s. The only thing is it's primarily rule-based and even, you know, some intrusion detection systems have evolved more with the big data uh, infrastructure and using a data mining as well. But then the issue is the lot of false alarms, a lot of alerts to look at and organizations don't have that many analysts. And at the same time, attackers are not sitting idle, right? So they also evolve their way. What they do is, you know, they find what security products are doing and they find the loopholes in that and they bypass it. For an example, you know, they would do their interactions through the encrypted HTTP protocol rather than the HTTP itself. So in that case, you know, the IDS, IPS and the firewalls won't be able to look at it. So the next uh, data source is the endpoint. So if you look at the endpoint, there are a whole bunch of endpoints, right? The thousands or hundreds, depending on the organization size. And there you monitor the 
operating system, uh, logs, processes, applications, and so on. And if there is any abnormal activity over there or any abnormal process or application, then you raise an alert. But again, you know, what attackers do is, you know, they would use the names which are more legitimate. So in that case, you, you know, AV and other endpoint products would fail. Another thing is what uh, the, with the endpoint products is, okay, so I think uh, let's move back here one more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was talking about the endpoint. Uh, from the endpoint, let's move on to the authentication uh, logs. So in any s network, there would be an authentication system. And that authentication system would be typically Active Directory based. Now think about it, if everybody has to get authenticated from one central location, what's the favorite destiny for attacker? They would go after the treasure, right? They would go and attack Active Directory. And that's what happens. So the more you, more, controls you have, the more things you have, you know, to make your IT infrastructure more usable and to make it more life easy, the attackers find more and more attack surface to do the attack. So let's talk about the data processing pipeline as such. So in the data processing pipeline, if you look at the, the data as such, you know, you can't make a sense out of it because it's just, uh, you know, the logs, but uh, it's a sort of a semi-structured form. So we need to make something into a structured form. So typically what you do is you do some kind of a regex operations or you do some structured discovery to extract the fields and then you do some analysis on it. So in this case, you know, if you want to make some sense out of it, this is the authentication data and you do uh, some key value extraction and then you get this. Uh, you get the table which shows the source destination, it shows the network protocol uh, distribution, and in this case, uh, analyst is actually interested in SSH, uh, SSH distribution over there, how many SSH activities happening in that particular VLAN. So the next thing what he does is he's gonna look at into the chart, and you know that chart could be produced by the, by anomaly detection product or, you know, simple visualization itself. But the, the key goal is he's investigating some anomalous behavior. Now for anomaly detection algorithms, we could use, you know, a whole bunch of them or use an ensemble of them. Uh, and the key message there is there are a whole bunch of anomalies would be generated. The sheer size of anomalies is huge. I mean, like if you're talking about just the critical alerts, there would be 500 critical alerts every day, and organizations don't have analysts, that many analysts. A single analyst would probably investigate five to six alerts, and you have a 500 of them. They don't have time. So they investigate only 1%, and rest of the 99% are left out. So alert deluge, and on the top of it, the false positives, the security defense is broken. What to do? Now, if this keeps on going, then next, more WannaCry gonna come and attack. We need to have a different approach. Need to think differently. So here is a way to think, get motivated from elsewhere. Get motivated from you know, the, the past ways of doing the war, and this is, you know, something which is there on my T-shirt, and also something over there on the screen from the nature. How nature assists to defend the various animals and the plants. It is about deception. So use the deception. So if we use the deception for a, dis, uh, for a security, then, you know, we can move the needle. So how to do that is you plant a whole bunch of deceptions in the enterprise. 
So what do I mean by that? You create a whole bunch of fake users, whole bunch of fake hosts, fake network services, network ports, and there would be all the breadcrumbs, layers, the registry entries, the browser, the browser history, all these different baits would be also sprinkled all over the network. So think it like, you know, you have made a landmine. You have put a, planted a landmine all over the network and now when the attacker comes in, he doesn't know what is real, what is fake, right? And that's where, you know, you, you can catch him. When he bumps onto any of the landmine, you trigger an alarm and that alarm would be of high fidelity, right? That's the advantage. The advantage what you got is earlier what you were looking at just a boiling the ocean the approach, you know, you were looking at all those logs, generating the anomalies and investigating each one of them, don't have that many analysts. But now you plant this deception there, attacker bumps onto one of the deception, you raise alert and you do a data science. And that's where, you know, the magic happens. You blend, you do a fusion of deception and the data science together. And as I was saying that the deception gives you high fidelity alert, zero false positive, you take that, you correlate with the security events, like all the logs I talked about, authentication logs, network flow logs, uh, also the end user logs, take all of them and see, you know, all those logs next to the deception event and create wonderful insights about that attack and about the attack vector and about the attacker itself. You can say a whole bunch of things that what was the profile of that attack, you know, whether it's a malware or it's a human or, you know, what kind of, depending on, you know, which type of uh, deception uh, he got bummed onto, you can really say what's, what is he after, get the intent to it. So with this, I will give you one crisp example of, you know, what can be done. And this is a crisp example, it can show you the path which adversary may have taken. And the way you compute this path is you start from the right hand side is, you know, you, you have planted the deceptions in the network and when the attacker got bumped onto it, you have got the alarm. You took that alarm, you did the correlations, do the correlations and then figure out what other hosts it may have touched. And you compute, okay, what's my signal to noise ratio? And then say that, okay, what other hosts it was interacting and go backward in the time. It could also go the forward in the time from the attack time as well. And then it would say that, okay, what's the most likely path it would have taken. So think about it, like if we get such a graph, what can, you know, we can tell a lot more about the attacker, we can do a lot more better detection and we can move the needle for to secure ourselves. So, in a summary, what I talked about, I started with the parameter-based controls. I went into the data sources and the traditional way of security. But we need to think differently. So the way to think differently is we need to get the mindset of attacker. And that mindset of attacker, what is he after? What is he trying to do? When he's doing a lateral movement, then you can catch him there by planting the deception. You plant the deception and then you do a triage with data science and get a lot more insights about him. And that would give you insights about the attack and about the attacker. And let me end with a, you know, one punchline here, which is, you know, in 2020, the rock stars of software industry and the product industry, who will be those? Those will be security data scientists. Thank you very much.